Center with Clark County Springfield Transportation Coordinating Committee. We work very closely with uh, all the municipalities in Clark County. We work very closely. We've got a great partnership with the city of New Carlisle and have for, for a number of years. Uh, we've been very fortunate to help you all with a lot of projects, a lot of very expensive projects, and to keep the local match down. Uh, one of the projects we've helped you out with in keeping the cost down is WestCat. WestCat is Western Communities Area Transportation. Um, a number of years ago, about three and a half, uh, we were faced with the possibility of having to seek out a public transit designation for the city of New Carlisle. Um, uh, the concern was there was no public transit service here, but everything was pretty much limited to the city of Springfield. The challenge at that time was that uh, if we had gone to the state of Ohio for that designation from the governor's office, it would have basically taken a portion, probably about $150,000 to $200,000 a year from what the Springfield City Area Transit receives. It wouldn't have given you a good project, it wouldn't have given you a sustainable project, and it would have taken that money from Springfield City Area Transit and crippling a 50-year-old system. So what I uh, committed at that time to uh, Mrs. Jones and then Mayor uh, Mr. Zambach was that we would find another way to, to seek out the funding for public transportation for the city of New Carlisle. Through that, we, we uh, pursued a job access reverse commute grant. It's a federal grant, and uh, it's a 50-50 grant. It's a 50% local, 50% federal match grant. Um, but even with that, you know, we thought we could do this project for about $50,000 to come out to New Carlisle three times a day, five days a week. But it just didn't make sense to come to just New Carlisle. Uh, we looked at Park Lane and then eventually went on to look at uh, Bad River Township and the Village of Enon to hit everybody out on the west side of, of Clark County. Now a lot of this was based on survey results we received. I've uh, put a packet before each, each one of you and uh, the first thing in the packet, these are survey results. Uh, it's just from one question of the survey we conducted in 2012. We sent out 10,000 surveys countywide and they were randomly sent to one in every six households. We had a return of 1,800 surveys, which is a very good survey return. Uh, but I've compiled the, the responses that we got from folks that responded and said they live in the city of New Carlisle. They may have responded and said they live in New Carlisle and Bethel Township. And then I also captured Bethel Township. One thing I want to point out on that, this one particular question, and the entire survey is always available, and I'll be happy to either email that to you as well. One thing I want to point out, this question simply says, which statement best describes you? And they've got a number of responses here that they can make, but number one is, I support public transit and human services transportation for my own use. Second response is, I would not use public transit or human services transportation personally, but favor it for those who need it. Third response, I support public transit and human services transportation in an effort to promote a greener lifestyle. Fourth is I do not support public transit or human services transportation. And then finally, the last was, I do not have enough information. Please send me information. And you'll notice at the bottom of that page, there are some, some responses and we did mail information to those folks. I brought this information along to point out that countywide, regardless of where we sent this, this uh, survey to, the majority of the folks responded saying that they supported public transportation in one way or another. It was actually 5% or less that responded saying they did not support public transportation. Surprisingly, most people said they wouldn't use it, but they support it for people that need it. And there are people out there with public transit needs each and every day. Um, I, I work in, in public transportation. I work in transportation in general. I personally, I've got two vehicles. I've never had a need for it. But uh, three years ago, I suffered an illness. And for a while, I wasn't allowed to drive. Suddenly, I'm a public transit user. I know people whose vehicles break down. Suddenly, they're public transit users. There are elderly people who, uh, who are told by their physicians they're not allowed to drive, but they need the independence. They're public transit users. And we have a lot of people who normally would make a, a trip maybe into the city of Springfield from the city of New Carlisle to access a job. If they don't have a vehicle, that's about a $40 one-way trip on a taxi cab, if you can find a taxi cab. We have a lot of people in Clark County that fall through the cracks. If you're under the age of 60, 
and you don't have some form of transportation, there's nothing available to you if you don't have a disability or if you're not elderly. So we tried to create this under, under the, uh, the request of, of the then mayor, and we put this, this project together. At the time, we did have another partner, which was Bad River Township, and then we also got a partnership from the uh, Department of Job and Family Services and Developmental Disabilities of Clark County. We were able to do this entire project for $70,000 a year. Now, just to give you an idea of what public transportation costs, the city of Springfield is paying close to $2 million a year for public transportation service in the city. We're providing this service five days a week, five trips a day, Monday through Friday. Um, we do have people that are using that for the in intended purpose of job access and reverse commute. Um, if you'll look at the packet I placed before you, you'll see a map on the first page that displays the overall coverage area of the West Cat route. The route connects in downtown Springfield, comes out to the city of New Carlisle, passes through Park Lane, Medway, down into Enon, through Mad River Township, makes a connection in Fairborn before going back into Springfield. Now, I can tell you that when we, when we took this project to the Ohio Department of Transportation, they told us this is a project that's never been done before. And they had their doubts about that. First, about the collaboration, the collaboration of having so many partners involved in this, and the fact that we could get it done for what we've done it for. I mean, that's a, a pretty low cost for everything that, that we've provided with this. The other was the cross-county connection. We connect with, uh, with Green Cats in Fairborn five times a day. We have people coming in from Green County in need of Green County services. You have people from New Carlisle who have indicated to Mrs. Jones that, oh, I'm sorry, with, to uh, Tiffany Latta from Springfield New Sun, that they board the bus here in New Carlisle and go down to Dayton. They cross over onto Green Cats, which then connects to Dayton RTA. So people use this for a multiple uses, but a lot of it is job access. I know there's a gentleman that lives here in town, an elderly gentleman, that boards right down here at uh, the Dunbar Fraley Funeral Home. Now, where does he go? He just rides the loop. But you know, it's, it's gaining him some independence. It gets him out of the house. These are just a few people. I mean, I, don't, I haven't had the opportunity to know everybody that's written, but I have placed some numbers uh, in front of you. Uh, if you'll turn to page three, you'll find the uh, 2013 total ridership. And just beneath that, you'll find the 2014 total ridership. So you can see a significant increase, almost 100% in 2014. The project is catching on. We've seen a lot of positives in the project. Now, again, not everybody is a transit rider. And I hope that uh, at some point each of you have had an opportunity to check it out. You know, you can talk to transit people anywhere. You could talk to Joe Calabrese, the executive director of Cleveland RTA. And I'll guarantee, guarantee you people have told him, well, I saw a bus with nobody on it. Most people see them that way. But people do use public transportation. People do have a need for public transportation. Um, the cost currently, uh, we were able, because the uh, uh, costs were kept down last year. We're able to reduce this by $1,000 per partner. So the total cost for another year of service will be $4,000. Now, I will tell you that we met with all the partners on Friday, and we laid it all out on the table. We said, look, everybody's having financial difficulties, and we totally understand that. So we committed as a group that if we get this funded for this year, we will commit to finding a sustainable funding source for at least three years through foundation, through corporate partner, whatever we have to do in order to continue this route and keep this going. Because we do see continued growth and we know people have a need for it. We have committed to do that as a group. If we can't do that as a group, then at the end of 2015, then, then we certainly surrender. But I, that's just not in me, personally. But. Uh, you, you know, we know that the, there's a viability there. If you turn to page four of the packet, you'll see some individual numbers, 2013 compared to 2014. And in, in the yellow, you'll see numbers. Now, I call these passenger contacts. A passenger contact isn't really an industry term or anything, 
but it's important because not everybody, in, in terms of ridership, ridership is counted when somebody gets on a vehicle. But I think it's important to understand where they're getting off as well. So if you look at the numbers in green, over the year, those are the folks that boarded a vehicle in that area. If it's in red, the, the people alighted or exited the vehicle in that same area. So we had, in 2013, uh, New Carlisle specific trips, we had 194. We had 17 in Bethel Township, but we had a total of 457 total passenger contacts. In 2014, we had a total, of, or we had uh, 308 in New Carlisle, 82 in Bethel Township, but overall we had 857 total passenger contacts. These are people that are going to work, these are people that are going to the doctor, these are people that are going to the grocery store, and if you look at uh, the Howard's IGA numbers, people are going there. Um, I know of a couple of people, personally, that uh, one's an employee of the city of New Carlisle that has ridden the bus a number of times to get to work. One was the uh, vice president of New Carlisle Federal Bank that rode to work each and every day from downtown Springfield. So it, it's a variety of folks, people that see the, the, uh, the viability of public transit, but people that have a, a real need. Uh, next page is the, uh, West, the website performance for uh, ridewestcat.com. And overall, we've seen a total of 29,000, almost 30,000 page views. We've had almost 20,000 site visitors. In 2004 alone, we were at uh, 16,527 views for almost 12,000 site visitors. We get a lot of calls. We get calls at TCC. Board of Developmental Disabilities gets a lot of phone calls. Uh, you know, people, are, people look into the system. Doesn't mean they always ride, but people like to keep something on the back burner just in case. Uh, Community engagements we've uh, participated in. Uh, in 2013, we did the National Night Out in Enon and New Carlisle. The Heritage of Flight Parade uh, and Festival uh, in New Carlisle in 2013. Same thing in 2014 for both. Memorial Day Walk Event in New Carlisle. Memorial Day Parade Event in Enon. Uh, we did a two-day transportation education event in, in Green and High School, which we're planning to do the same with Tecumseh. And then also we've done travel training for seniors at United Senior Services at the Enon Satellite. Uh, so we, we do what we can to keep the brand out there, to keep people excited and educated about public transportation. And uh, one other piece of information I brought along for you that I just want to point out is this is a study that was conducted uh, by Nelson Nygaard. It's a company out of Boston, Massachusetts. They were hired by the Ohio Department of Transportation to conduct a statewide transit needs study. If you look in there, I've highlighted some of the areas that are important really to the city of New Carolina. But on page two, under transit supportive development patterns, in the first paragraph it mentions Clark County shows much higher density and it's centered around Springfield and Northridge. The county also consists of a few higher density areas in the western part of Clark County in New Carlisle, Park Lane, and Enon. You go to the next paragraph, Springfield, New Carlisle, and Park Lane are the only notable, er notable areas with population and employment densities that based on national evidence support or suggest an ability to support transit service with a frequency of every 60 minutes or less. And then finally, on the third paragraph, deviated fixed route may, may be more appropriate for New Carlisle and Park Lane, which is what we do now. We just also offer the service to other areas. Uh, the next page is just a little more specific about what Westcat does. The lower portion of that page mentions that SCAT and WestCat uh, are also interested in exploring, exploring partnerships with employment centers, employment training centers, Clark State Community College, Wittenberg University. Um, and then also WestCat specifically is open to partnerships with Wright State University and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. We are working very hard to continue this. We're working very hard to, to, to grow this out. We don't want to ask for uh, local funding on this anymore. I mean, it's, you know, to do this each and every year is rough. It's rough for you, it's rough for us. I mean, we are committed. We, we, had the, we had the heart to heart on Friday, and we are committed to seeking out a sustainable funding, funding source if we can get through 2015 with this. 
you know, I would mention too that uh, there's a lot of value that comes in this. Having $70,000 worth of transportation, your cost equates to less than a dollar per resident per day or per year. Also, based on the number of operating days, I calculated about 251. The overall cost of the system to the city of New Carlisle is about $16 per operating day to offer up an option to everybody that lives in the city of New Carlisle. Yeah, I wish I, I could tell you that we, we dug up a funding source and we've got somebody you know, waiting in the wings. I can't tell you that, but it doesn't mean we're gonna stop. It doesn't mean I, I can't come to you in a couple of months and say we got this worked out and you know, the Board of Deedy writes a check back to the city and, and to the, uh, the township and to the village. We've got a very strong partnership and we've been really blessed to have uh, Job and Family Services on board. They are the major contributor. They believe in this. Board of DD believes in this. Um, Matter of the Township believes in this. And the majority in Eden believe in this. And we've committed to do more with them. I mean, they just recently voted to stay on board with it. So, uh, you know, I know that, uh, that I'm kind of limited on time, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, yes, we have questions. Mr. Okay. Okay. To my understanding, Bethel Township benefits from this, but they don't pay into it, correct? That is correct. And how is that fair to the citizens of New Carlisle, our taxpayers, that they're benefiting from something that they're not paying into? Well, from, from the evidence you've shown, they're the ones who predominantly ride it more than the citizens of New Carlisle, and yet they're not paying for the fee and our taxpayer dollars are riding on it. Yeah. How is that fair to us? Well, if you look at the map uh, that's provided on the front page, there's really no way to go down into the village of Enon without passing through an area with such a density and population. I mean, we could have taken the vehicle uh, 40 and cut down Enon Road there in Donaldsville, but are we really being good stewards of, of public dollars at all? If we bypass, if we have an opportunity well, to go to it for it, and we are. Well, I understand that, you know, that that would just make sense to But me. we also have to look at the federal dollars. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but I just think that our, our taxpayers are getting hosed by this deal because the township says we know it's not going to work and they opted out of it. Yeah. And well, we're paying for that. I don't think hosed is an appropriate word, but you know, we're using the majority of federal dollars. 20, or 35,000 of this is federal money. 20,000 of this is Department of Job and Family Services money. Does the federal money run out? We, we've got the commitment of federal money for several years now. But we'll care what happens when that runs out. In several years, we'll be back at square one again. Well, we'll be at square one if we lose the local funding. We, we probably have a greater chance of that than we do the federal funding. But to, to answer the question regarding Park Lane, because Job and Family Services contributes so much to this, we run the chance of losing the major, major local contributor if we just bypass a major population center just, just because they didn't contribute. It just didn't seem like good stewardship of the, of the dollars that were committed. I totally understand what you're saying. I mean, I, I totally get what you're saying. And we, we did bounce that around. It's, it's like, well, is this really fair? But I would also add that originally when this started, City of New Carlisle was on the hook for $10,000. $7,500 to, to pay into it and $25 of in-kind administrative. And we found a way to work this out to where that was not gonna be the case. We had three, uh, I don't wanna say minor contributors, but you know, lesser than what Department of Job and Family Services had to say. Um, so, no, I mean, I totally get, I get your question, but we were looking overall at the best for the project. Um, no further questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Massey, I'll commend yes, you. You did an excellent job. Thank you. However, I think it would have been better if you was trying to sum up to me in the first place. Okay? You went through a lot of numbers and you made them sound good, but I can turn them around on you and they look real, real bad. The one number you didn't mention, how many people ride per day? Per day, okay. uh, about seven and a half. Seven and a half, okay. That's an average. Okay, seven and a half. I heard it was a lot lower than that. Well, well actually, what was stated in the paper, or, or what uh, and Mr. Mr. Craybacker has never been seven people on that bus. Never. Well, well, I'm not saying seven people at one time. Okay. 
Okay. You said per day. Mr. Craybacker mentioned in, in a quote in the Springfield News Sun, he mentioned one or less than two. It's 1.5 right. right. yeah. per trip, per trip, not per day. Exactly, per trip. Okay. Right. Okay. And that's an average. Okay. So, I mean, we, you may see six on there, you may see zero. Okay. Next thing, you talk about the $35,000 to $25,000 plus the $4,000 from each community, okay? Yes. That's a lot of federal dollars, pardon my language, going to waste. I have told Mr. Jones that bus runs up and down the road and I see fumes and dollars coming out the tailpipe because no one's right. Okay, it's a lost cause. Mr. Jones also t tells me, Rick, there hasn't been a bus service in New Carolina 40 years. Guess what? You just found out why there hasn't been one. That won't pay for itself. I have one question left for you. Okay. And I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I appreciate the answer. If you solely own Westcat, how many days after the day would you run that bus and take money out of your pocket rather than the federal government and pay for it? If you had to pay for it, not my tax dollars. Yeah, that's, that's not really a fair question. Sure it is. I'm asking you, if you own Westcat, with the statistics you just gave everyone sitting here, how much money would you be paid off with? Yourself, not getting money from my pocket in tax dollars. Well, of course, nobody would do that. Thank you. You answered my question. Thank yeah, you I answered the question, but it really is kind Thank of a good question. You answered the question. Council, anyone else like to say something? Yes. Uh, Mr. Massey, I think you've got some good information here. Do you have any data on case studies with other maybe counties that have that rural slash? Springfield kind of in the middle. I've got access to all kinds of data. And you know, that, that's a good point because, you know, with a rural system, which is more of what this is, rural does not compare to public, it doesn't, it doesn't compare to a, like a urban type system. Although we're connecting with an urban system, rural is a totally different animal. You know, if, if your folks did not have access to this bus, they would be paying $40 per one way trip to get into Springfield. And that, that was a question that was posed to us by the village of Enon. I mean, they're looking at 30 to $40. You know, you've, got, you've got human service agencies like uh, uh, United Senior Services, and they'll provide a trip, and they'll do it for free. They'll do it for a donation. But you're going to call three to four weeks in advance. You're going to schedule the trip if you're over 60 and if you qualify for the service. It's the same thing with, with uh, services for the disabled. You know, you're, you're going to be challenged with a heck of a wait you can't plan for tomorrow at all, and we know things come up. But, I mean, again, this, this was something that we constructed at the request, actually, of the city. And, you know, to put it together at what we've done and to pull the partnerships together, this, if you wanted to try and run this system as the new Carlisle Plus system, you would be looking at probably about $100,000 to $150,000 a year. By the time you hired drivers, you paid for a bus maintenance facility, you paid for fuel, all that. And you know, we're connecting to a lot of communities and your, your portion is $4,000. And like I said, we're trying to get it down below that. There's no, no private company, to answer Mr. Lowry's question, there's no private individual that would be able to do this and take money out of their pocket. Yes, so, can I answer you? And that's exactly what I'm getting at. There's no private company to do it, so we depend on a federal government, which is money out of your pocket, my pocket, and every person in your pocket, to do it. And it's not giving any dividends. Let's put our tax dollars to something that serves a purpose. It, if you looked at Cleveland RTA as an example, or look to SCAT as an example, they're recovering about 10% of what they pay for public transportation. The recovery rate is about 10%, 10 to 15. 15, if you're doing really well, is what's recovered. The rest is federal money and local money that's put into the system for the good of people. There are a lot of things that, that we put money into for the good of people. I personally am not a trail rider much, once in a while, but I support the heck out of that trail system because there are people out there that ride the trails. I don't live on a cul-de-sac, but my tax dollars pay for repairs of somebody's cul-de-sac somewhere. It may only affect two or three people, but my tax dollars are going into that. I don't mind. Sometimes we do things for the good of other people because other people have needs. Citizens, anyone out there like to ask, have a question? 
Anyone have a question? Mr. Lassie? I want to make a statement. I'd like to us to work myself. Could you identify yourself, sir? Sorry, my name is Tim Clark. And uh, I read the bus to work during the summer, two times a week. And then two weeks ago, my power spring went on my car, and I found the bus. To, I, I used the bus to get to work that day. I did I get my car fixed? So it does come in handy. And that's all I want to say. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else? On the audience? Council? Anything else? Staff, anyone? Anyone like to say anything? I would like to thank Mr. Bassey for coming out here tonight on his own time and all the work, not just tonight, but all the work he's done towards this project over the last two years. He is a great advocate, not just for the West Cat, but for the city, and I appreciate it. And I know, in return, I want to thank the council. I want to thank everybody here. Like I said, TCC has a, an amazing relationship with the city of New Carolina. We appreciate all of you. And you know we uh, we appreciate your uh, your collaboration in this project uh, thus far. I mean we do hope that it continues, but uh, I mean we we do appreciate the opportunity to come out and talk on this tonight. I know it was very difficult to get everyone together to put it together in the first place. It's been a trial for the last two years, I believe. Now coming up on close April, to two, yeah. And April will be two years, I believe. Correct? Yes. But again, thank you for all your hard work. I want to thank Mr. Jones for her hard work and everyone else involved. In. And again, thank TCC for everything that they've done for the city of New This is where we've gotten our lights up and down Main Street and many other things that we've been able to get, uh, different grants and so forth. So thank you very much. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Thanks for coming out to see you. Thank you. I believe we're now at the uh, city manager's report. Yes, we are. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'd like to start the uh, city manager's report out tonight uh, with the finance discussion, and I'll turn that over to our finance director, Mrs. Harris. Thank you, Ms. Jones, uh, Mayor, Council, and citizens of New Carlisle. We are starting out the first of the year, 2015, with my January report. Total revenue that we took in in January was $230,580.21. Uh, expenditures, and I'll go into a little bit of a breakdown, for January was $408,676.67. Um, for that breakdown, since the expenditures were quite large, some of our February accounts payable ended up in our January's books as we're converting over for our new year and trying to implement our new budget. Um, we were a little bit behind in January. So I broke it out. So it has your January's accounts payable of $89,818. And February's that's included in that total, $112,205. So those will be broken out in February. They'll balance back out. The other thing that um, we were looking for a verification was the tax income tax receipts. The tax administrator did not have his um, total records up to date. So I do have an update on it for the end of January, we did collect $59,815 in tax revenue instead of the 40,000 that's on the report. It is still um, down for January and the tax administrator has given us the information that with the, uh, most of the collection is due at the end of January and with it falling on the weekend, we got a lot of it in the first and second day in February. So again, you'll see these numbers change next month and they'll probably smooth out a little bit. Um, I believe that's all I have on that front sheet for right now, if there's any questions. Council? Yes, Mr. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Calling for question. Is the city of New Carolina at the present time in any danger of going into a fiscal watch? At this present time, with what we have well, right now? Well, within the next foreseeable future, within the next 60, 90 days. When I was asked to come up with the um, estimated balance for the end of 2015, and we worked on that last summer, and we had an estimated $400, I think everybody's kind of aware of that, that was if anything had changed. Right now, currently with the contract with the sheriffs have lightened our um, expenditures, and right now I do believe we are doing a lot better for 
um, for this year. I can get you a little bit better total now that we're moving into it. No, I just, you know, I would, please and, excuse me, I'm not being sarcastic. I would do it like a yes or no answer. I mean, I understand what you're saying. Do you feel that like, the city of New Carolina, anytime within the next three, four, five months, is in danger of going into a fiscal watch? It's really hard for me to estimate. Right now, I feel comfortable we are not. Okay, and, I, and I'm not asking you, you know, we don't know if 14 trucks are going to break down yes. in one day. I understand that. Exactly. Okay? I, and we I do really not have do. a budget approved yet, too, to work on. That right. will help me get you better figure. And I know it's a very, very tough question, and I appreciate you answering it. I really, really do. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Anyone else? Okay, thank you so much. And before I go any farther, um, I'm sorry I didn't introduce Mr. Pragan is here tonight instead of Ms. Dinkler. I think you probably noticed that, but I just wanted to <laughs> make you all aware that well, he is here tonight. Um, and then continuing um, service discussion, uh, Mr. Kitko, our service director. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Good evening, members of the uh, mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, just a couple quick items. Uh, we're still working on our Neptune meter project. We are nearing 90% completion. We are down to uh, basically some stragglers, some bad plumbing issues, um, just some areas where uh, just trying to get a hold of people, door tags. Um, so those door knockers will be going out. Uh, if you know your neighbor or not has changed or has not changed it, please do so. We at the city, and with the help of some of Neptune, is trying to make a one additional call before we do these last couple hundred, before we do shutoffs. Um, and uh, hopefully, we don't get into doing shutoffs, especially with the weather like this. It gets to you know kind of be of a, a pain. Um, but we're we're getting finished with that project. The second item is we received our second or our only guaranteed allotted amount of salt which was 72 tons we got that from the miami county uh, engineer's office we are currently using salt as it is still at a premium and uh, you know still doing our main roads intersections uh, and you can see today even with some cold temperatures i think what little salt we did use pretty much opened up just about every road and put some sort of blacktop down the some uh, some of the roads i am currently seeking out i got two contacts so far as of today uh, to try and get another 25 tons or 50 tons set aside in reserve uh, just in case you know february decides to keep snowing in march so i'm um, hoping we don't run out we will treat it as if uh, we possibly may and i will try to get some uh, more salt uh, put in the barn here in the near future that is all i have council any questions i i have one for you Current price that we're having to pay for salt compared to what we had to pay a year or two ago. If you will. Uh, a year or two ago, we were between fifty-seven and sixty-five dollars a ton. Um, this year, salt was one eighteen, and I have a cost in the the two contacts I'm looking at. One is uh, right about one eighteen, also, and one is one thirty. So it's more than double. It's more than double. The attorney general's so like cost of everything. That's the unfortunate part. Anyone else? Yes, sir, Mr. Zan. Uh, I do have a comment regarding the salting that has been done so far. Uh, mm -hmm. I find that as long as I pay a little bit of attention when I drive on the snowy streets, I really don't have a problem at all. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the intersections are facilitate greater safety. As long as we don't have a snow that's up over the top of our bumpers, I think that the way we're handling it now should be considered for all future dates it, and save some money. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Continuing then our planning and zoning discussion with our planning director, Mr. Randy Bridge. Thank you, uh, City Manager Jones, uh, Mr. Mayor McLaughlin, members of council, members of the public. Um, I'd like to share with you the planning department activity for January 2015. Uh, council members, you may know that there's a different format this, this, this time. I'm thinking about switching it up, so any kind of feedback you would want to give me about this would be greatly appreciated. Um, I'm going to start doing the code enforcement just on graphs. It's a little easier to uh, digest, I do believe. And then I'm going to stick with talking about what's really going on in the department. So the first item is New Car Lot is open for business. We have a vacant parcel of the month that is located at 526 North Dayton Lakeview Road. It is the parcel directly south of Artie Holder corporate office. 
Uh, it is 22.85 acres of undeveloped land that is divisible. It is currently zoned uh, I-1, which is light industrial. Permitted uses are industrial and manufacturing, research and development, warehouse and wholesale, building material sales, and storage yards. Conditional uses require a planning board and council approval. Uh, but those are junk, salvage, and auto bill wrecking yards, resource and mineral, mineral extraction, uh, retail establishment. It is adjacent to State Route 235. The traffic counts are up to 10,000 vehicles per day. Uh, Long-term goals, I have a small industrial park with multiple businesses. If you'd like some more information on that, just contact the City of New Colorado, and I can connect you to the property owner. Uh, flipping over to the back, we got ordinance of the month. I know I used this last month, but I think it, it, it could not be more appropriate for given the time of the year. That is 660.05, is duty to keep your sidewalks uh, in repair and clean. Uh, basically what this ordinance states is if you have a chip or a crack, uh, somebody could trip on it, fix it. Uh, but more importantly, this time of year with the snow on it, it is the homeowner's responsibility to shovel that snow off. Um, under the farmer's market for 2015, we have a tentative start date of June 20th. Again, it will be downtown New Carlisle. We are looking to partner with the com uh, uh, community, uh, the health district, excuse me, to bring a farmer's market and nutritional program to our market this year. It will be a voucher system, but it's a good way to get uh, healthy food uh, alternatives to our community uh, members who uh, may not have that opportunity to get it anywhere else. Uh, we do need farmers, market manager, and planning committee mem members. So if you are interested for the 2015 season, just give me a call to City Building at 845-9492. Community garage sale tentative date is the weekend of June 20th, 2015. I sent out letters last uh, to last year's participants asking opinions uh, how to make this year a little bit better. Um, the response I got uh, back is uh, obviously yes, we want to have it. It was a great success last year. There's concerns over what dates to have it. I had a few people want to do it on a Thursday or Friday. Some of the responses I'm getting back is they don't want to have it on a Thursday because I don't want to have to take off work to do it. So we're still trying to figure out the exact of is it going to be a Thursday or Friday or Friday and Saturday. But once we do get that, I will communicate that here at the council meeting. Uh, vacant housing 82. Uh, I'm going to kind of divide it up. I know some of the council members like to see this. Um, but 82 total, 73 of those are residential, 9 of those are commercial. Um, but I will note that that does not include if somebody has their water turned on but is not using it. These are just, there's no water service at all. Uh, I do believe that is all that I have, so I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Yes, sir, Mr. Evans. Mr. Bridge, uh, the letter you had sent out, are, are we planning on charging people now to participate in this? That is one of the questions, the minimal fee, either 5 or $10, and what that will be used for is for marketing materials. Uh, last year we had to take it out of the planning department the budget to put an ad in the paper, and it costs money to make these maps when you're making four, you know, two or three hundred copies of each one to give out to the people who come. It is a kind of a burden on the, on the department budget. So far, the response I've got for, back from that, as far as that fee goes, has been 100% supportive. Of course, people want to keep it on the lower end, about $5, opposed to 10. We could probably still work with that. We had over 80 ad addresses last year, so you do the math on that. We charge five bucks, that's $400, that we can use for marketing. Some, uh, some citizens have contacted me about it, saying that, oh my goodness, we participated, now they want us to charge us for it. So, well, you know, at, last year I uh, walked around and asked a lot of people if they had an issue with it. Nobody said no. Uh, so my opinion on that is those are the people who probably didn't make enough money. All right, just sure. wanted to know. Anyone else? Yes. Mr. Bridge, I just had a couple of questions on the way to your report. Uh, as far as home, homes that are for rent in the city, do the people that own those homes, do they have any stipulations or guidelines that they have to follow? As, do they have to report anything to you or anything of that nature? No, not directly to me. I mean, a lot of that would have to be with a lease between the homeowner and the uh, rental rentee, I, I would assume. We do have a report the, land, the landlords fill out, and they're supposed to give us a notice when somebody moves in and moves out. That's mostly for us to be able to sh make sure the taxes are, pe sometimes people move in and move out, and we don't know, and they don't pay their income taxes. So the landlords are responsible. Um, we sent out a mass letter to them probably about eight years ago, and then every time they get a new tenant, they're supposed to let us know. Okay, so they give you the they're supposed to give you the information, the name, and the, right. And who they're that's at. that's commercial and residential landlords. 
because you know some of the commercial owners that have tenants come in we have new businesses come in and out and we we weren't notified and people drive by and say did you know so and so you know that's how we find out there was a business there they have is it fairly accurate or is it kept up to date though um the tax department keeps it up to date yes okay so if someone if someone comes in and, and buys a house and turns into a rental property and they move someone in uh, they are supposed to send you the information as far as but if they don't I mean, the city we'll building. send it to them if we find out, and usually through them getting water or whatever, we'll find out in the long run anyways. But Okay. Well, my next question is, because I was doing some research on this, and the reason I'm asking is I've noticed that the, the, the properties in the uh, the rental properties, and you know, they're going through the cycles of people moving in and them moving out, and they're not putting your money back in the house. So I'm not saying faded, uh, you know, paying on their shutters or anything, but like there's a house not far from uh, where I live. There's no doors on the entire house and they just keep re renting it out. There's another house over on this side of town that has a fence that's, that's laying in a little. Is there, and I've seen some cities that look into this as far as giving renters, like say an inspection before they can do it, is that possible? Well, that will be part of the program that Mr. Bridge is starting this year with the exterior maintenance. Right. That um, simply covers what your house looks like. I did want to do a rental registration, landlord, um, but it probably would have been uh, time consuming for one man department, but also um, we're looking at charging fees and we don't want to incur fees to our residents essentially. Right. So, but uh, all that will be covered with the exterior property maintenance survey. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else for planning? Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Continuing then with the fire discussion, uh, Chief Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of council, citizens, and guests. Uh, for the month of January 2015, the division responded to 109 calls for service. The fire response is totaled 19 with an average response time of nine minutes, two seconds. The division responded to 90 emergency medical calls for service with an average response time of five minutes, 38 seconds. In Elizabeth Township, they responded to 11 calls for service four fire responses and seven emergency medical responses. Uh, there were five responses to Elizabeth Township itself, three to the village of Cast, or yeah, village of Cast Town, two responses into the city of New Corral, and one response to Christiansburg. Uh, some significant events on 1-8, we had a mutual aid fire with Bethel Park at 2155 South Union Road. Uh, as usual, the the New Colorado Fire Division melded in with the mutual aid companies and that fire was put out rather quickly. <clears throat> we had a fire here in the city at 1002 Edgebrook Drive and again uh, mutual aid partners came in and we got that fire under control rather quickly. And then again the crews responded down to uh, uh, 10610 on Kendig Road for a mutual aid fire in Delphi Clark. There was a fatality in that fire but uh, once again the crews worked really well together as we often do and brought the fire under control pretty quickly. <clears throat> My safety message uh, this month, uh, if there's an emergency at your residence, your first call should be to 911. Uh, we're not able to get the system started unless you give us a call for that emergency. Uh, we see that time and time again. People phone relatives before they call 911 or they come up to the fire station in their car to report an emergency. We're not always in house because we may be out on another response. So the most important and most critical thing in the whole 911 system is to actually activate it and get it started so we can get units headed to wherever you are. So that's all I have. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Okay. Council, any questions? Thank you, Chief. No problem. And for our police discussion, we'll turn that over to Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Ms. Jones, Mayor, Council, citizens are here tonight. For the month of January, uh, New Corral deputies, they took 21 reports, county deputies 26, and that was 47 reports for the city of New Corral. Miles patrol, 2,208. Miscellaneous calls, we had 32. And follow-up investigations, there was one. Under traffic information, we had 67 traffic stops and 73 citations were issued out of that. There were also nine OVI arrests and we had actually 12 charges out of that. We had 14 under suspension, five parking citations. We did not tow anyone, and we had no accidents in the street 
or non-injury. Under criminal arrest information, adults arrested, there were 16. Adult charges out of those 16, there was 31. Two juveniles were arrested with two with four charges, and we had six warrant arrests on top of that. We also filed two warrants uh, for the month of January. Special interest assaults, we had none reported to us. Breaking and entering, we had none reported. Thefts, we had one. Vandalism, there was none reported. 911 hang up, there were four. Phone harassment, we had none. Domestic violence, quick and assault, we had one. And we did not have a verbal domestic violence. Lockouts, there was one. We had no peace officer calls. We had two alarms and 36 assists. On January 1st of this year, the New Carolina, city of New Carolina lost a deputy due to budget constraints. And again in February, another deputy was cut because of financial problems. That takes the deputies working in the city of New Corral down to two. The two remaining deputies have bid for the shift for the 2015 year and have been assigned those shifts for the remainder of the year. On February 1st, 2015, Deputy Tim Leedy was reassigned to the Clark County Jail because of budget constraints here in New Corral. I just want to personally thank Deputy Leedy for his dedication and exceptional service to the city. He did provide an exceptional service to us. Um, with that, if you have any questions, I will be more than happy to try to answer them. Council, any questions? Sorry. I just want to second your comment about uh, Deputy Leedy. I thought he did a wonderful job for us here. I hope we can get him back. See you I'll forward that on, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the report, sir. Thank you, sir. Finishing up then with the informational items, um, it is the time of year that we need to do our finalizing of our 2015 budget, and I would like to request that we have a special meeting, work session, to do that like we do every year, um, to go over the, the finalized numbers. Um, I would suggest we do it next Monday, the 23rd, if everyone is available, and then we would be able to take it as an ordinance first meeting in March. I believe it's due to the county by the end of March, so that would give us March to get it, the legislation done to pass it. Mr. Mayor. Council, does that sound good to you, Mr. Zambach? Yeah, I move we have a budget work session at 6.30 this coming Monday, the 23rd. That'll be where, please? Here? Here. Mm -hmm. you want to add that to your motion? Yes, it's here. <laughs> Spell oh, it's right. <laughs> and uh, do we normally limit that to two hours? Maximum. Um, you can. I, I, I'm going to leave it open. Never mind. Just start at 6.30. Do I have a second? Second. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Zambo. Uh, you guys may get upset, but I'd like to see this be held on Saturday. Okay. So there's no time constraints. If need be, bring a lunch. This is not something that I don't think is going to be done in two hours. Uh, and I think we really need to sit down and look at it real, real well. I'm willing to do it on Saturday. I have no problem with that. That's just my thoughts. Council, I'll Thank you. rest of council since we're missing two members. I'll yeah, council. I understand that. But I'm out of town this Saturday and next Saturday. So. We're out of town on Saturday. Mr. Zambaugh, what do you prefer? I, I prefer Monday, but... I could become available if necessary. Go with Monday. We can always start that way, Mr. Lowry. Then no, that's good. I need more time. I need more time. I'm fine with you know. Okay. No problem. Thank, thank you for bringing that up. Appreciate. Uh, call for the vote, please. Mayor Blackham. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Yes. And that's the end of my report. I'd be glad to take any questions if anybody has any. Council, any questions? City manager. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. All right, we're now at uh, comments from the members of the public. Is there anyone that would like to speak this evening? If you could go up, please. Mr. Cobb, to the podium and introduce yourself, your address. <coughs> <coughs> I'll call to the Bill of Rights.
And I'd like to direct this question to you, Mr. Mayor. The half a century foot on the bottom of May, is that strictly mandated for the sheriff? That's the way it's written, yes it is. Is that correct, city manager? I'm sorry, I was turning the temperature. Could you repeat it one more time to the city manager, please? She didn't hear it. The half a century foot on the bottom of May, is that strictly mandated for sheriff? Yes. Yes, it Look, is. It's earmarked strictly for the police, police department and the Police expenses. I mean, you hear different rules about it. That's why I wanted to get a clarification, please. Right. Police expenses. Police expenses only. Okay. And if it's not all spent in one year, which I'm sure it will be, it would carry over to the next year, still be in the police department. Okay. I just wanted to get a clarification. Sure. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. Yes. Mr. Cobb. I think the way a lot of that got started, that there was a difference, that it was not all going to the police department, because it was said by myself and everybody else here that when that came into the general fund, it would free up more money for streets. But the money being voted on is going into the general fund and be earmarked for police. It's going to be a separate account, just like it is for the fire department and EMS. Exactly, I would be happy. Yes, sir. We appreciate your help. Thank you. Anyone else? Any citizen like to say anything this evening? Now's your chance. No? Okay, thank you. We'll continue on. Uh, committee reports. Any committee None reports? Tonight. Okay, resolutions? None tonight. Yeah, none tonight. Yes, sir. Would you like to go ahead and read? Yes, I would. Ordinance adopted. Ordinance 15-05 public hearing action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with developmental disabilities of Clark County regarding the job access and revert commute JARC program. Just to clarify, this is on the West Cat. Is that correct? Yes. It is. I just want to clarify for everyone out here that we heard the report on this evening and so forth. Uh, Council? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move we adopt Ordinance 15 5. Do have a second? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, any comments, any discussion? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Uh, before we take a vote on this, I had just did these numbers, you know. We, they, the bus services, 7.5 7 people a day. It would cost the city today $10,000 so far, or another 4000 in. I think it would be really foolish of us to keep this service because we have now cut our police department in half. And this service is 5,732 of us. That's according to the... Uh, uh, census how many people live out here. So I think it makes zero sense to keep the bus while we're cutting off police officers and we're telling people, you know, you gotta do, we gotta, we gotta stretch our dollars as and I will be voting no on this. So I ask everyone else. Thank you. Anyone else? Comments? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chairman. When I first asked Mr. Massey if there was any way we could bring public transportation to New Carolina, he immediately so, well, I believe so. Let me look into that further. And he took it and he ran with it and worked with Kim. So those two are the ones that really brought it out here. And when I originally approached him, I thought, I thought there was a definite and distinct need for public transportation from this end of the county into perhaps Green, Montgomery, and of course, downtown Springfield. Uh, I have changed my mind as to the degree of the need to this part of the county as evidenced by the fact that we have very very minimal usage of the service but i do want to thank glenn and kim for all the hard work they did on it and especially glenn from he's one of these government guys that we always whine about never does anything well he's not one of those he's one of those guys that really does do something so thank you very much glenn. anyone else any other comments yes I, yeah i'll just say you know i, I i'm the same boat those two are and I, I but i definitely want to put forth a thank you for the effort that everyone did, had a hand in it because I mean, I know a lot of people with their heart and their soul and blood and sweat and tears into it. Um, but I, in financial streets, we're trying to save everything that we can. I would hope that somebody would step up. 
another entity or someone that would come up with $4,000 a grant, whatever it might be, maybe from somebody from Springfield and give out grants right and left. And that might be something that if it could be, could be kept going. I don't feel that the city should put their money out at this point, especially since how where we are in our financial state. Anyone else? Mr. Carr, would you call for a vote? Mr. Mike Lowry. No. Mayor McLaughlin. I have to say no. Mr. Zamboff. As I said, I am reluctant to say no, but usage indicates that no. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Rick Lowry. No. Ordinance fails zero to five. When you're ready, if you want. Yes. Ordinance 15-07, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the city of Springfield, Ohio, regarding concerning access to radio transmission facilities by the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Mr. Mayor, move to adopt ordinance 15-07. Second. And as an explanation of this ordinance, um, this is just a renewal so that we can have uh, the trans radio transmission facilities on the standpipe in Springfield. Any comments? Any discussion? Mr. Carter? Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Passed five to zero. Ordinance 15-08, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of, agree memorandum of agreement with Security National Bank for the deposit of public funds. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to adopt ordinance 15-08. Second. And as an explanation of this, um, we do currently use Security National Bank for some of our public funds. Um, we're in the process of switching a majority of our funds to the bank due to the fees that they are able to charge us. Um, I think we're going to have both banks for quite a while until all the transition can be done, moving accounts and, and such. But um, I think you'll see that there will be quite a savings in the, in the fees over the next couple of months. That would be a great thing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Zambach and I have been after that for quite a while. We appreciate it. that they step forward on the fee situation. We still couldn't get that from the other bank, I think. We gave them many opportunities. That's unfortunate. <laughs> it really is. Mm -hmm. Any comments? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Zambach. Uh, roughly, do you have any idea what we're looking at? Dollar savings? Right now, until um, <clears throat> as soon as we um, get the approval and move, um, our expenses over there, it's going to be at least 10000 a year. Savings? Savings. In Thank bank you. fees. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Glad to see that. You bet. Any other comments? Anyone? Thank you, Colleen. Discussion with you. Mr. Carter? Mr. Rick Lowry? Absolutely. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Definitely yes. Mr. Zambach? Very happily so, yes. Mr. Earl. Yes. Pass five to zero. Ordinance 15 09, introduction to that public hearing and action on March 2nd, 2015. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for professional services to study the London Avenue and Scott Street intersection for street signage. You could continue on if you'd like. Other business, city offices will be closed on Friday, April the 3rd, 2015 for Good Friday. There will be a joint government meeting. Oh, that's all right. I typed it. Then they're done there. Joint government meeting on uh, Monday, March the 30th, 2015 at 6.30 p.m. And this meeting will be held at Tecumseh High School and as always open to the public. Crime Watch meetings will start again on Wednesday, March the 11th, 2015 at 6.30 p.m. 
here at the Smith Park Shelter House. And uh, we need, a council needs a motion to uh, excuse uh, council member Kraybacher and also council member McIntyre. Mr. Mayor. Well, excuse me, one moment. Do we, can we do those together or do we need to do them separately? That's a question to that. Um, I think you could do them together. Yeah. You haven't yeah, passed. Yeah, yeah, we haven't passed. I'm sorry. No, I said we haven't passed. I'm just going to make a motion. We could do them together. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we were doing that correctly. So may I have a uh, motion? Mr. Mayor, move that we excuse Councilmember John Craybacher and Councilmember Bill McIntyre. Second. Second. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Pass five to zero. Thank you, sir. Executive session, there's none tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask one more time if anyone in the audience would like to say anything before we close up. Anything at all tonight? Have any comments? Staff, anything? Council, other business? We have somebody here, Mr. Lowry. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had the unpleasant task the other day before my birthday to go to the New Carlisle License Bureau by license plates for three vehicles and a trailer. While I was in there, I was speaking to him and asking how things are going. Most of you know that there was one time a couple of years ago that was talking about closing it and taking out of New Carlisle. He said numbers were down from last year, but they did just get an extension for one more year. So what I'm asking is for everybody, don't send in for license plates when they come due. Go up there and do it there so they can get the count and we can keep the new car our license bureau here. I, I'm sure no one here wants to go to Springfield to get their license plates to stand in line or much less to have to change the title of the and stand away for two or three hours. It's a great service they provide. Let's, when you need your bags you need, your you driver's license or whatever, go up there and use them so they will stay in business. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Mr. Zambon, do you have something? I have one last thing I'd like to say. Well, two things. Again, I'd really like to thank Glenn and Kim for all the work they did on Westcat. I was really hoping that it would attract more usage from our part of the county, but it didn't. So my idea, it sounded good, but it wasn't so hot. That's the first thing. Second thing, anybody that's here and has to have their paper signed for school, anybody on our side of the table can sign your papers for you. And I have one other question. I have an answer. Yes. <laughs> no, you have the question. I have the answer. Okay. Would you like me to uh, move yes, we adjourn? Yes, I would, please. <laughs> <laughs> and move we adjourn? Okay. <laughs>